What up guys, welcome to my channel. So I started my YouTube journey about three years ago and just recently I got 1,000 sub. But this video is really more of just a love letter to what started it all, which is this GH5 camera and why I love it so much. <music> So to start off, I'd just like to say if you're new here to my channel, I'm all about solo filmmakers and empowering solo filmmaking and just creating cool shit, really. So if that's something that interests you, you might want to consider subscribing or get the fuck Thank you everyone who has followed me. A thousand subs is not something that I take lightly. I know it's small potatoes in the grand YouTube ocean of vastness, but for me, coming from a background with bands and music, a thousand people is like... 10 times more people I've ever had to one of my concerts. You fill up a club with a thousand people, it is bumping. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you. I'd come to your house and hug you, but I'm not allowed right now. COVID restrictions, you know how it goes. So this video is gonna be all about my GH5 camera. Now considered a relic, an old piece of tech, but you know what? I still love this camera and here's why. <laughs> So the first thing I want to talk about is just the size. So a micro four thirds sensor is about this big, a full frame sensor is about this big. And so you need glass to cover both of those sensors. If you're going to have an image that doesn't vignette on the sides or crop in. So with that little sensor, you start to get lenses that fit into this small package, these small lenses where I can take three micro four thirds lenses, one of them anamorphic for the same weight as a nice 1.4 prime lens for a full frame. And that is a huge advantage to the system. I mean, if you're traveling around and shooting, it makes a lot of sense to travel with a smaller package. That's what she said. Moving on. Uh, the next thing I love about the GH5 is its ability to shoot in 10-bit footage. So when I first got the GH5, I didn't know what the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit was. It was a mystery to me. And then getting it, I learned that with 10-bit color, you have a vast array of more information available for you to push grades around and have really funky things or even pull the shadows up, pull the highlights down as long as they're not clipped and just kind of work with that. Whereas when you're working with 8-bit footage, like say from my Mavic Air right there, you really don't have that kind of freedom. The difference that I've noticed myself is whatever you're filming with 8-bit had better look good when you're filming it. With 10-bit, I mean the rules still should apply, but you just have more freedom to be able to fix things and move shades around. There's just more data in there to move. And I wouldn't have known that if I didn't have the GH5 for that. Now obviously some newer cameras have that 10-bit functionality, but it's just not as economical still as the GH5. It's a little windy here and I don't have my uh, dead cat, just the foam thing, so I don't know how this is going to sound. but. This is just an example of the dual IS that you get with uh, my 12 to 35, the Lumix 12 to 35 2.8. And look at like how smooth it is. Like that's, that's what I love this camera for. And then because it's micro four thirds, the 12 to 35 lens is, is tiny compared to the equivalent, which uh, the Sigma 18 to 35 is what most people use. And it's massive. I usually use that too, but because we're out on an island and kind of exploring, I take the small kit with me and uh, this is the kind of stability you get. This is holding it out with a small tripod. You get pretty wide. Here it is walking. So you, so you can see what uh, the actual vlogability of this camera lens setup. I challenge you to point me towards a camera that has better image stabilization. Did I say that funny? Image stab? 
for this kind of thing. It's like, it's unbeatable. I don't know, maybe it's because I love this camera so much. Definitely biased, but it's pretty great. Something I feel like I'd be really remiss if I didn't talk about is uh, the 4K image and the quality of the 4K. So usually when you deliver a video, you deliver it in HD or when I upload it, I, del I, I usually upload it in 4K, but it's an HD video. And the reason why I want 4K is so that I can punch in on the different parts of the video. You can go two times in. And the beauty thing about the GH5 is when you punch in, it's still a really crisp image. It's not like other cameras where they're 4K and they get really soft when you punch in. It's not the case with this one. And the last thing, although there's a lot more I could talk about, I could have a part two if this interests you. The last thing is anamorphic. So I'm not going to run through what anamorphic is. There's lots of videos on that. Just know that it is very uncommon for a consumer level camera at this price point to be able to give you the tools to be able to shoot in anamorphic and view it in anamorphic where it's already been desqueezed, so it already looks nice. So Sue Ray was amazing enough these last couple years to produce uh, these anamorphic lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system. They, I believe they have a 75, a 50, this is the 35, and then they have a 24 mil. So there's a full set of them. And what it does is produce this wider cinematic image. So I'm not saying you're going to be able to shoot Hollywood movies with this camera. What I'm saying is it gives you the ability to learn about anamorphic shooting and to learn about what that means and what it does to the image and why you would shoot with it and what it does for your lens flares, why it lens flares like that. And that is a pretty amazing thing to learn. And so once again, I feel like the GH5 is just one of the greatest teachers to learn how to shoot video. So that's the GH5 camera. That's why I love it. That's why you should love it. That's why you should go pick one up used because you can save a lot of money if you buy things used. They did just bring out the GH5 Mark II this year and from what I understand, it's kind of got a little bit better image stabilization, six stops instead of five, and it does 4K 60, 10 bit internally, which is a big deal. But I think for the most part, you really don't need to get that. What that suggests to me is you can probably pick up a cheap GH5. There's still people pushing GH4s and GH3s on the Panasonic forums. So I think that anyone would be very happy picking this up as their YouTube learn to film make solo filmmaker video camera and that's where I stand on it hey thanks for stopping by if you enjoyed this video or you got something out of it just hit that thumbs up button that helps me out a little bit and if you want to see more content from me hit the subscribe button and the little bell so it'll notify you when I put out a new video and until next time I'll see you on the next video bye